Ezekiel 7 delivers one of the most cheerful and encouraging messages from this book. It's full of judgment and punishment and destruction. Okay, maybe not so much an encouraging message, but definitely a sobering one. The time of God's judgment on Israel is not just approaching, it has arrived. This chapter clearly illustrates the consequences of a nation's persistent disobedience and the urgent need for repentance. The Lord declares in verse 2 that the end is here. Wherever you look, east, west, north, south, your land is finished. This isn't just a warning, it's a final notice. It underlines a fundamental spiritual truth. There comes a time when the window for turning back closes, emphasizing the urgency of responding to God's call while there's still time. The impact of God's judgment affects every aspect of society. It says in verse 26, calamity will follow calamity, rumor will follow rumor. They will look in vain for a vision from the prophets. They will receive no teaching from the priests and no counsel from the leaders. This breakdown shows that when judgment comes, reliance on an earthly wisdom and leadership will prove to be insufficient. The chapter also discusses the worthlessness of material wealth in times of God's judgment. It says in verse 19, they will throw their money in the streets, tossing it out like worthless trash. Their silver and gold won't save them on that day of the Lord's anger. It will neither satisfy nor feed them, for their greed can only trip them up. This is a powerful reminder that the things we often value and rely on cannot deliver us from spiritual or moral accountability and judgment. In Matthew 6, 19 through 21, Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on this earth, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For wherever your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Jesus, in a way, is highlighting this message from Ezekiel and advising us to prioritize spiritual and eternal investments over temporary and earthly ones. Ezekiel 7 may not be full of cheer and encouragement, but it does call us to reflect on our own lives. Are we ignoring God's warnings distracted by material gains or human wisdom? It's a prompt to reassess our priorities ensuring our hearts aligned with God's will and to turn back to him with urgency and sincerity. This chapter is a call to seek security and fulfillment in the only place that it can truly be found through a restored and renewed relationship with God.